Welcome to Mathematics with Tom. I am Tom. And today we're in section 2.1 of our book and we're going to look at solving this problem, this second order differential equation that we've just derived and that it's m y double prime plus k times y equals zero. So since it equals zero, this is clearly going to be a um, a null solution. So let's let's see if we can find our null solution. Now the the one number that has seemed to get us out of every situation has been the exponential. Once we had a complex number, it seemed like the exponential was really the solution to all of our problems. So out of desperation, maybe an educated guess, let's try that. So what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to try our null solution, yn, and I might just write y from here on out. Uh, y equals some, we'll just say e to the s, e to the s t. Or actually we'll use s t works just as well as anything. Well, what we're gonna need in this is we're going to need a few things. We're gonna, also we're gonna need a second different, uh, the second derivative. So y prime, let's find that. So y null prime is going to give us s e to the st, and let's try that again. We need a second derivative, so that's going to be s squared e to the st. And now let's substitute all these in. We have y null, oops, m, y null double prime plus k times y null equals zero. Let's substitute and solve. So this is going to give me an m times s squared e to the st plus k times e to the st and this equals this equals zero. Hmm. Okay, let's keep going. Um, I'm gonna let's see here. Notice that what this really is saying is you could think of it as dividing out by the exponential or we could factor the exponential and if we did we'd have m s squared plus k times e to the st has to be zero. So what this is really saying is this is implies that m s squared plus k has to equal zero. All right, well we can handle this. Now remember what our goal is is to figure out what s is. So I'm gonna subtract the k, divide by the m, so I have s squared is a minus k, I'll write this way, minus k over m. Ooh, okay, let's take the square root. This is gonna give us something maybe a little unexpected. That is that s is equal to plus or minus and then we're taking the square root of a negative, so that's gonna give us an i times the square root of k over m. Now, that might be, if this is actually a great solution. And for reasons we're going to discover in a little bit, uh, uh, we're, we're gonna be rewriting our equation based on this discovery. I Instead of uh, writing the square root of k over m, because that's a lot to write. How about this? We're just going to let let uh, the square root of k over m, k over m, equal, we're going to use that a letter we've used before, we're going to use the Greek letter omega. It looks like a w, it's kind of bent in, but, but it's an omega. So we're going to let the square root of k over m equal omega, just for the sake of clarity and simplicity in writing. So in other words, s is equal to plus or minus i omega. Well, let's write out our solution. Notice there's two solutions. So our null solution, what this is telling me, is my, my null solution based on, is going to be some constant, we'll call it a times e to the i omega t plus some other constant, b, e to the minus i omega t. Now, remember that the a and b, those are just some constants, and we've already shown that constants do not affect the null solution, that those constants will be determined based on some initial conditions for the problem. And we'll take a look at those in a later video, soon to be there. So, let's try this. Um, 
oh, we need to expand this. Well, we know this. Remember that e to the um, i omega t, well, this is the cosine omega t plus i sine omega t. And you might also recall that e to the minus i omega t, that becomes cosine minus t plus i sine of minus t. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, and then, but the cosine of negative t, because cosine is an even function, this is the same as the cosine of t. Sine is an odd function. It has that property that this becomes minus i sine t. All right, let's make our substitutions now. So now I can rewrite this as y null equals a times cosine omega t plus i sine of omega t plus capital B times cosine t, oops, cosine omega t, pardon me, cosine omega t minus i sine of omega t. Now let's do this, let's regroup this, regroup by cosine and sine. So what I can say is that y null is equal to, y null is equal to, uh, oh, let's do it this way. If I factor out a cosine of omega t, I'm going to have an a plus a b times cosine omega t. And then if I factor out an i, I factor out a sine, let's just factor out the whole sine piece. Well, then I'm going to have an ai, a times i. And then I'm going to have a minus b times i times the sine of omega t. Now, this may seem really strange because, because a plus b, well, that you expect. That's just a number. But ai minus bi, that's an imaginary, has an imaginary component. But here's the difficult part, but this is the step we're going to take. AI minus BI, this is just, it's just some number. Some number. I know that's, that's all it is. So what we're going to do is our general solution to this, to this second order differential equation is that our null solution, Y null, is equal to some, we'll use some C1 cosine of omega t. Plus, well, that's just for a plus b. We'll just simplify it. So we'll say c1 is a plus b. And we're going to do this. We'll let c1 equal b. Oops. Write it this way. Let c1 equal that. And c2 equal a i minus b i. So if we do that, we write this as C2 cosine of omega t. And there's one last piece that I think we need to see. And it's probably best if I grab another color here. So let's grab um, this pretty yellow here. And what I want to show you then is where we started. We started this with the problem of m times y double prime plus k over y equals zero. Now we know that the mass, if if the, the mass has to be something non-zero, otherwise this problem would be of no interest. So I'm going to divide by m and I have y double prime plus k over m times y equals zero. But look at what we said earlier. We said that omega is the square root of k over m. So in other words, k over m, k over m is omega squared. So y double prime plus omega squared times y equals zero. And it's usually this form of the equation that we write and address. And that's how we solve a second order differential equation. Understanding it, we'll save that for our next video. I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.